is Dynamics 365 a model-driven app? The one word answer, yes. And if that's all you're here for, thanks for watching, but I'm hoping that you might be here to understand why. That is, what's the same, what's different, why would you use Dynamics 365 instead of a model-driven app, and can you configure Dynamics 365? Yes, you can. Let me show you how all this comes together. I'm going to start here in my model-driven app, and this is the form to view a contact. If you're working with a model-driven app, you are essentially building a Power App from scratch. If I go into the Power Apps experience here, you'll see there's a heap of data tables that come out of the box with that model-driven apps experience. So I could come in here and work with the account table, the contact table, all of these different things. Let me just click through into the contact table, which comes with a bunch of different columns and, and all sorts of attributes and things that you can use ready to go. But if I go across into forms here, you'll see that we've got this range of forms, including a couple here with LC and social media and tweets and things that are things that I've configured. But essentially, you're getting a baseline of those different forms and you'll get an experience that looks something like this. And as you've seen, hopefully from my other videos, you go ahead and configure whatever you want on the screen. So when you're building a model driven app you've got all of that structure there a lot of stuff that you can start with but you are putting the whole thing together from scratch this is the contact screen in Dynamics 365. Now, when I'm saying Dynamics 365 is a model-driven app, I want to be clear here, we're just talking about the suite of what's known as the customer engagement apps, sales, customer service, field service, marketing, those things sit in that family. If you're looking at the finance and operations, supply chain and so on, those things are, are not model-driven apps. They operate a little differently. I'm going to switch back and forth a little bit here so that you can get a good sense of it. Down the left-hand side here in Dynamics 365, we've got a menu with quite a lot of different different things. If I switch back over into my model driven app, exactly the same look and feel. We've got purple at the top instead of uh, instead of the blue, but you'll see there's much less there because when we start a model driven app, it starts from blank and we add in the things we want, whereas Dynamics 365 has got a heap of other things already built in there. So definitely is they are the same thing underneath, but Dynamics 365 is a fully built out, very comprehensive model driven app, whereas a model driven app is the platform on which you are building whatever it is you want from scratch. Let's look at some other differences here. We've got this information down the side and the timeline, same concept that we've got going on here. But if we have a look at Dynamics 365, there's a bunch of other stuff here and you'll see some other tabs along the top here. We've got features that are baked in that you can only get with Dynamics 365. And this is the sales application. This comes with a thing called the Relationship Assistant that allows you to prompt for next best action suggestions. We've got some subgrids already pre-configured here. You could build this yourself in a model-driven app with recent cases and recent opportunities and so on. So why would you buy Dynamics 365 instead of building a model-driven app? That depends how much effort you want to put into this and also how much sophistication you want. So if you wanted to build a CRM with a model-driven app, you could totally do that. You've got within here the tables. Uh, if we go back here to the list of tables and have a look at all of them, we've got account and contact. We've got all that stuff about tracking activity in there. And if you wanted to build an opportunity table and have a pipeline process that goes through that opportunity pipeline, you could totally do all of those things. If you're starting with Dynamics 365, there's a heap of this stuff built in here for you. So you'll see we've already got leads, we've already got opportunities in here. And again, there's a lot of other process built in here. So for instance, we've got these add-ons that allow you to get sort of scores. We've got, you know, the predictive score of how likely this is to close. That's something you're only going to get if you're in Dynamics 365. You can't add that into your model-driven app. If I go into a lead here, you also see there's a very sophisticated process built in that allows you to go from a lead to an opportunity. So we're going from a qualify stage into a develop stage. The business process flow is already set up that we're going from a lead and this will take us to an opportunity with a qualify button in the toolbar there. And if I click that qualify button, it automatically creates an opportunity, creates a contact and an account and all of those things linked up if they aren't there and pulls all that together. So if you wanted that experience in your model driven app, you would have to build and maintain that. So essentially then you're working with the same platform underneath, but you're choosing between I want to build whatever I want from scratch versus I'm going to take a completely, fully complete app with a heap of work already done in all of the form design and all of the process design, plus some additional AI things that I can just light up. That's the difference in what you're paying for. Now, a lot of 
people ask, can I configure Dynamics 365? Can I change the process flows? Can I change the fields on the screen and so on? Absolutely you can because it's the same thing under the hood. So if I go in here and have a look at my maker experience, then this is what it looks like when I'm looking at the Dynamics environment. So again, let's just go back and have a comparison on my model driven apps environment. I'm looking at all tables. Scroll down here. There's a bunch of things. There's actually, you know, quite a lot going on. We're getting to the C's here. We're going from sort of catalog challenge management. There's quite a lot here that's from the sample app that I've deployed as well. If you don't deploy the sample apps in your model driven apps environment, you'll have fewer than what we see here. If I go across into the Dynamics environment, and let's scroll down again to the C's here, we'll see a whole lot of other things. So we've got cases in here now. This is part of the customer service capability and so on. So if you scroll through all of these things, there's a heap more going on in terms of tables. Even in the sales application, we've got things in here like quotes, orders, invoices, products that go through a whole process that you can connect all those things together with quite a comprehensive product catalog. Again, you want to build all that from scratch yourself, <laughs> go for your life. But there's a trade-off here, right? At some point, the work of building all of that, including all of the process automation and all of the AI and everything on top of it, is not going to be a better way to go than purchasing this out of the box. So my recommendation here is to have a look at those Dynamics apps. And if they're close to your purpose, if you're in a sales environment and you're doing quite sophisticated sales things, you're going to be better off there. If you're doing a very, very basic CRM, basically an address book, and you just want accounts and contacts and things, you're going to do great with a model-driven app. You can create that yourself and save yourself some money. Hope that clears it up for you. Same thing underneath. One is choose your own adventure from the start. One is fully built out, sophisticated, first-party model-driven app. Thanks for watching.